Hi and welcome to this video tutorial on how to make a concrete material for V-Ray in Rhino. I'm going to be using this simple courtyard scene I've set up here and I'm going to be rendering out this window view which currently looks like this here and we'll be replacing this white material with our concrete material in this example. So to start with we're going to download a texture for our concrete and I'm going to go to textures.com for that. Um, if you just look under there, regular photos, under bare concrete, I'm going to be using this seamless texture here. And make sure it's seamless, that way it will kind of nicely tie together when you're repeating the pattern across your surface. So we can just select that and I'm just going to download the free version of that image. And then we're going to go back to our file in Rhino and we're going to create our concrete material. So I'm going to start by opening up my asset editor found under the little V icon here or up in V-Ray Asset Editor. We're going to go to our Materials tab at the end. We're going to add material, create a generic material and I'm just going to rename this Concrete. Once we've named that I'm then going to open up this right hand tab just clicking on this small arrow here to open up the settings and under Diffuse we're going to import in that concrete image which we found. This is done by just clicking on this small checkerboard box next to the Diffuse option, selecting Bitmap because we're going to be inserting an image into here and then it will open up a select file icon and we'll select the image we want to use and we'll hit open and now we have a small preview of our concrete texture and if we click on back that's now then applied to our material. So now what we can do is that we've applied that texture to our material. Now we can apply our material to our object. So if we select the object, right click on your material and click apply to selection here. And that will apply the material to the object. And we can have a look in our render window if we do a test render to see if that's gone on correctly. So there we have our concrete material in place. Now I've just drop this material onto the object without properly texture mapping it and sizing that material. So what it's done is it's just stretched the image across the whole object. What we now need to do is texture map that material to make sure that the size is correct to my object. To do this we're going to just minimize these. I'm going to select my object here, go to the properties panel and under the properties under texture mapping, this one that looks like a checkerboard kind of cone there, we're going to select box mapping here and we're just going to draw out a box which will represent the size of our image. Now it doesn't matter too much what size this box is when you first draw it out because we can resize it. So I'm just going to do a kind of rough size like that. Once you're happy hit enter and then we're going to have a look back at the render and see how that is looking in the rendered view. So there you can see it's now rendering out and the image is a lot smaller in pattern and that's looking at quite a good size. We can always check the size by if you select the object you want here, go to your mapping and then look at the XYZ size here and it will tell you in whatever units you're using what size that texture is. So mine's currently 2600 millimeters roughly in a square. So if I made that let's say a thousand. By a thousand, by a thousand, there you'll see now that it's a lot smaller on my image. We've got a lot denser texture there than it was before. So you can quickly change the size of your texture just by typing in the size in this box here. And it's a good way to do that if you've got the live render preview on you can have a look and see how the size changes with the texture. So that's the basic concrete material in place but what if we want to make it a polished concrete for example and we want to make it shinier. So we'll first have a go at making a polished concrete material. This one's the easiest to do out of all the concretes. All we need to do is up the reflection value of that material. So if we go back to our concrete material here under reflection open the drop down Turn the reflection color, it will by default be on black, which basically equals a reflection of zero. If we turn it up to white, that will make the reflection value a reflection of 100% effectively. So that's what the kind of white and black mean there. It's a kind of value from zero to 100. And you can see now that it's reflecting 
the image I've got behind this scene and also on this wall is reflecting the kind of light opening in this window. Um, you also have a glossiness value here and that affects the sort of shininess of the image. So as you can see in the preview, we're getting this kind of mirror finish on that reflection. So if it was a polished concrete, you'd want your glossiness to be one. If it was sort of, you wanted it to be a bit more sort of dampened and a less shiny finish, a more matte finish, we can lower that value down and you'll see what it does is it diffuses that reflection slightly. So if I put it on a sort of 0.9, you can see here that it's slightly diffused. It's quite kind of hard to see in the image, but essentially you can kind of see on the preview here as well. The lower we get that, the more diffused that reflection will be. So you can play around until you've got it to a nice level. I think for mine, we're going to keep it relatively high. We'll keep it at 0.95 there. So that's simply how you do a kind of shiny um, reflective concrete or polished concrete if you wanted it to have a shiny surface. Now if we also wanted to get a bit of texture into that surface and we wanted it to be a bit bumpy we can also do that in this material and we're going to use the bump map option to do that. So I'm going to close the reflection, go down to material options here, go down to maps and we'll look at bump and normal mapping and we'll open this one up, turn it on and what we can do is essentially the way a bump map works is it takes the image. So let's say we use this default image here and it will kind of look at the dark points on the image, look at the light points and it will raise and lower the texture depending on those dark and light points. So for instance, we can just drop in the same image we're using for the color of our concrete into the bump map and it will take that natural kind of gradient that's in the image and help it sort of create a bumpy surface on that texture. So let's drop that in, bitmap again, we'll locate that texture, open it in, hit back again, and you can kind of see there that we've got a rougher surface now. Now it might be quite hard to see from this far away, so what I'm going to do is we'll zoom in on this wall a bit so we can see the texture there, maybe pan it to the side slightly. because it's quite a sort of subtle treatment, it's essentially just giving us a little bit of sort of roughness on that edge, just to kind of give us a slightly bumpy surface. You can see it in here as well, where it's kind of making the shadow a bit bumpier than it would be. But with the bump, it's very subtle. You don't notice a kind of distinct change in the material or the texture. You can kind of see it in the preview there. It's quite a subtle change. Now, if you wanted something a bit more extreme where you've got kind of relief in your concrete or it's got a quite a strong texture to it, we'll need to use something called a displacement map to do that, which is found below the bump here under displacement. Now, what I'm going to do is we'll stop this render and we'll just minimize this for a second, get our window back here. Now, if we go back to our textures.com website, if you go to their 3D scan materials. They also have a series of kind of more textured concretes and you've, I've got this one here, which is the Bunker Concrete New, which you can see has got a much kind of more of a profile to it. You've got parts that are pulling away from the material and parts that are pushing in. So if we wanted to create something like this, we'd start to use the displacement map to do that. And you can download the textures for this here as well. And we're gonna use the Oblido, which is essentially the color and the height map, which will give us that relief in the texture as well. So I've downloaded those two. We'll go back to our V-Ray and I'm gonna switch out the diffuse for a new diffuse for the one we've just found. So let's just cut that one and we'll click back on the object, go back to bitmap and I'm gonna use that Bleedo I've just downloaded for that new texture. Drop that in. We're gonna clear the bump out and we're gonna turn the reflection off as well. So it's back to being a matte material there. Now we'll scroll down to the displacement here, turn this on, and I'm gonna drop in my height map image there. Now this is essentially a kind of stronger version of the bump map, which actually physically deforms the geometry to give you that profile. And if we look at the preview there, you can start to see this happening. 
Now it's important to note that depending on your units, this amount value will differ. So if you're in meters, this will kind of represent one meter in amount. If you're in millimeters, it will be one millimeter. So it might look on the preview as if something's happening, but when you do the render preview, and we'll just open this up, let that kind of reload a sec. When you do this, it might be less apparent and you can kind of see something's happening, but it's not very strong in there. So bear in mind your units when you're applying this amount. And sometimes this small preview doesn't show you exactly what the texture looks like. So let's up this to 10 and see what happens. You'll see in the preview, it's going to be quite extreme. Probably in the render, it won't be as extreme in there. So even with a value of 10, it's still quite a subtle displacement at the moment. So, but the preview is showing us quite an extreme version. So sometimes that preview will lie to you. Um, it's always good to do the test render to have a look and see how it's actually working. So I'm going to up this to a thousand. So it's going to be so extreme that this will probably go completely off the page. Yeah, but the reason it looks blank here is because in the preview, it's pushed the surface of the object out so far that it's moved away from this kind of ball which V-Ray has as its sort of placeholder image. So we can no longer really see it. But in the image, we should still be able to see that there. So I'm gonna re-render it and have a look. So this is what it looks like with a displacement of a thousand. And you can see that it's very extreme now. The kind of objects and surfaces are pulled away from their kind of point of their surface of the object. And we've got this kind of weird floating area so I think 1000 is far too much. So we're going to dial it back and we'll put it at around 100. And you'll find with displacement, it takes a bit of sort of trying out different values because the preview doesn't really show you exactly how it looks. You have to sort of try out a few different values sometimes until you get the kind of right look you're looking for. So don't feel disheartened if it doesn't work first time. It's just a case of sort of dialing it in. And here we go. We're getting something much nicer now. So we've got a nice bit of profile happening on this surface, giving us that kind of concrete relief texture. So that was just a very quick tutorial in how to create a concrete material in V-Ray for Rhino. Um, we looked at kind of making a polished concrete, but then also a relief and textured concrete as well. If you want to find any more videos on creating materials in V-Ray for Rhino, please have a look on the channel and thank you for watching.